This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We're discussing what Denise did in America. She helped her husband, who was the manager of the Harvard morgue, um, and they were, like, flogging hands and feet and heads and faces, and they were selling them on the black market. And we thought, wow, so many people have worked at a place and stolen stuff and then used it as currency, Caitlin Bassett, with the CDs here in Nova when she was a Casanova, hey? What do you reckon that CD would be worth, though? Like, come on, a single. A single. A single. Isn't it so funny that they waste a whole CD to put one song on? Mm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, back then. And I remember, I remember it was Calvin Harris mm. and there was a whole pile of Kate Miller High Key CDs. Yeah, that's <laughs> <true. laughs> Nobody wanted them. No one wanted Jan's them. Jan's in Henley Brook. Good morning, Jan. Good morning, how are you? Good, uh, good Jan. We're talking about people flogging stuff at work and selling it. What do you got for us? Um, I used to work for, be a truck driver for an ice cream company and we used to sell 16 litres for the um dairies and uh, five litre cartons for the supermarket. Yes. And we used to have a meeting point and I would stop and I would exchange ice cream for cartons of cigarettes. <laughs> Uh, like prison. And we also used to have um, Ernest Adams back in the day. Yeah. And I would swap for slices and cakes oh. and all sorts of things like that. So, yeah, we had a bit of a swap meet going on. So, whereabouts? Wow. Would you all? Would it just be when you saw each other or would you all go to, like, a park at the same time, everyone open up the back of their trucks and everyone just, like, be, like, swap meeting? No, we would just sort of pass each other on the road and we'd just pull over and then go back, reverse back and then open each truck and see what we wanted and just exchange, you know. How good is that? Oh, my God. What was was the most exciting thing for you to get your hands on? Um, Probably the cakes. The cakes? (laughs) Probably the cakes. A truck full of slices and stuff. Well, that'd be nice, but I'm thinking 16 litres of ice cream would go down pretty well at my joint. Mm. Yeah, but you've got no room in the freezer for 16 (laughs) litres of ice cream. You know what I mean? Like, who has 16 litres free of space in their freezer? But, like, cakes and pastries. (gasps) Imagine it. Your weight and custard horns. (laughs) Caitlin. I just think I want to know is that was there a code word on the radio that they'd use when they passed each other? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Okay, that is brilliant. Let's go to Kylie in Lakelands. Hey, Kai. How you going? Yeah, good, Kylie. All right, so flogging stuff at work and selling it. What happened? Oh, I don't know whether he was selling it or not, okay. but we had this one guy every fly out day because of FIFO. He used to steal fly spray and Glen Twenty. <laughs> fly spray and Glen Twenty. That's expensive. And Glenn, <laughs> <laughs> and then get it confiscated nearly every single time at the airport going of, through screening. Of course, flammables. You can't take them on board. So he, out of everything at FIFO, and there's some, uh, I'm guessing some amazing stuff at FIFO that you could flog, a uh, can of Mortine like, and some Glen 20. <laughs> that, that's my thoughts, exactly. Like It's like, what, $3 for a can of fly spray? Like, and he does it, does it repeatedly. Repeatedly. like, And he wouldn't even put it in like a backpack. He would get one of the dirty... Big black bin liners... Fill it up. Yeah. Oh, wait there. So in my blend. mind, in my mind, he was only stealing a can. How many cans was he stealing? Multiple cans. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> in a black garbage bag. <laughs> but but, but I go, my, my mind is going, who is his Who is his, Who is his? his customers when he gets back? Who's buying Glen 20 and Mortine on the, 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 the black market? <laughs> <laughs> Some germaphobe. <laughs> I don't know, but oh, oh, you just God, laugh. He'd literally walk in with his black garbage bag over his shoulder, go through screening, and next thing you know, they're ripping this bag open and taking like six cans of fly spray and eight cans of Glen 20 out. I'm like, what the hell is this doing? What are you doing, man? Where are with you, Kylie? What oh, are you doing? I love him. That's great. Let's go to uh, finish off with Ben in Alchemos. Hey, Ben. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good. So good we're, we're calling you, Ben. Yeah. Ben, tell yeah. us yeah. what so happened. For, for the purposes, because I can't say names and everything, uh, so this person still works for the company and it's an automotive company, sells car parts and et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And uh, what they were doing is they were using the manager's login to order in these parts. Yeah. Parts would come to the store, they would then readjust the store level to take the parts home. Now, not only were they selling them, <gasps> so your car parts, but think we're not talking five, six dollar bills, we're talking hundreds of dollars worth of like an alternator. Yes. You know, five, six hundred dollar alternators, you know, three or four hundred dollar starter motors, those kinds of things. They're not talking a ten, twenty dollars here. Yeah. And they were selling them to people, fitting them, charging them fees, working as a mobile mechanic. Oh, oh. yes. No. This went on this went on this went on for a good year and we, you know, we didn't think anything of it because it was like we we seen it come in, you know, we sit in them go home with it. You know, you just assume people are doing the right thing. You don't think, oh, they're stealing it. 
And then, you know, questions were asked because there was, you know, money going out for these parts. Yes. And actually they're not a, a, a light item. Yeah. Um, and because of the major's login, the major got fired for it because <gasps> they couldn't... Oh, they, they couldn't, couldn't chase it down to who it was. So it got pinned no, on him. because it was, yes... So the manager got fired, um, complete, completely done for stealing. The manager got fired. They tried taking it to court, but because it all pointed to them, because it was their login that, or the parts in, it was their login that did the stock adjustment, and then the parts just disappeared and no money went back in. Um, the person to this day still works there, one of the only original people that actually still works there. The rest of us, the rest, the rest, the rest of us left. The rest of us, we, we also got other jobs and we all left because we just, we, we weren't going to be put into the same boat. So does anyone and that currently work with that person at the same place still, does, does anyone there know what that person did or did or that secret no. go with all of you? No, we, we, we have said things to people, but naturally it's proven. Ooh. Proven. Oh. Proven, yeah. And yeah. honestly, sitting here today, I sort of think about it. And, you know, you, you, you sort of look at it like, oh, yeah, you know, starter motor used to be 150 bucks all day, used to be 60 dollars Not anymore. You know, some, you know, especially like, oh, what was it, a 7, a seven Series BMW. Um, yeah. they, retail, they retail, some of their alternators retail up to $4,000. Oh, wow! Yeah, yeah. Plus, plus, Ben, as you're saying, that they uh, that person was um, selling them and fitting them mm. as a yeah. mobile mechanic, so they're stinging them yeah. again. Mm. I was going to say, yeah. I can't believe that person's um, still there, but why would that person ever leave? Yes. Do you reckon they're still doing it? What an amazing... Yeah, do you reckon they're still doing it? I, I, I personally do not know. I don't have any association with the company anymore. Yeah. I went... So when my manager got fired, it went to court. I stood there and said, well, I've seen this person leave these parts, blah, blah, blah. And they said, yeah, but can you prove that they weren't paid for? Can you prove they have been paid for? It's like, well, no, you can't. Oh, because it's all under someone else's name. God, that person has crossed all their Sneaky. T's and dotted their I's, haven't they? That's amazing. Most definitely. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Nathan, Nat and Sean, Natalie's away until Monday. We've got Caitlin Bassett in with us, though. And uh, we've, it's been a while since we've seen you, Caitlin, mm. so it's really great to just be able to, you know, shoot the breeze and, and find out things about you that we, you know, may have not known about because we haven't seen each other for so long. Yeah, and Caitlin, one of the things that uh, we came up was um, we're talking about maths, right? And mm. it's, it's it's a show that I despise. Mm. Yeah, And we have I to don't watch get into it. it. So this is the thing, and I think a lot of people don't realise we don't get the opportunity to watch it as viewers, mm. we watch it as homework. Yes. Okay. So Fair it enough. sort of homework. changes the yes. way that we view it. So maths for me is great because it's like it's a staple. It's on at the same time during the week. I'll make dinner. It'll be on in the background. I don't have to concentrate or think when I'm, I'm watching. I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. Can, can you? Can I just say the, the way your face lit up yesterday when you were talking about maths? She goes, "Oh my god! Isn't it just best? The best conversation starter that you can use." It is. Conversation started. When I was playing netball, I used to have to watch shows like Bridgerton and stuff like that so I could <laughs> conversate with the young players in the team. Yeah. But maths is like a universal language. Like you'll meet someone, they go, I hate it, and then you can go, oh, why? And you yeah. start getting into it if someone loves it. I was in Sydney on the weekend. I stayed at the Sky Suites, which is where they filmed oh, did maths. Did you? Yes. So <gasps> did they like clean it properly? Did you put I that blue light over the yeah, bed? Yeah, no, I Dude. didn't. I went into the pool. There was, you know, I was a little oh, bit sus. But oh, yeah, God, no, you I love taste it. Jack. And the, the best, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. Like, there's always drama, something to talk about. You cannot love it and still have a great conversation with someone. Well, I, yeah, I can't see. I, I, it worries me that people buy into it. That's what I that I say. And, and it's all acting, right? So mm. I get angry that people get angry at it. Does that make sense? Well, Sean, I, and there's also a demographic that likes maths, and that's basically, you know, you're, you're whacking the whack, whack bam in the, the demographic, yeah. Caitlin. Yeah, yeah um, that's true. So, but yeah. but say, say, say when it gets to my parents, I've, I've been around my parents' house um, one night and then maths has been on and said, oh, I better catch this. And they go, no, you're not watching this at our, on yeah. our television. We're not watching it. See, that's not the same. That no. generation, they don't watch maths. Well, that's untrue because, especially when I was living in Sydney, my dad would call me and he would ask me because I was ahead of time. He'd say, oh, yeah. who says stay? And who says leave this week? Like he'd want to know. He, he loves it. He loves maths. He couldn't wait the three hours. He couldn't or the wait. Two he hours. wanted the heads up. He wanted to know what was going on. All the drama. <laughs> so he's actually devastated that I've moved back to Perth now because I don't have like the forward thinking of no, telling him. What's oh, going the on. future telling yeah, of, of what's going to happen him. on we maths. We have to watch it at the same time. Sean, there yeah. is a father that actively is watching mm. maths and hounds his daughter for information. I think the only thing that's left to do is speak to this man. We need to meet him right Hello, now. Hello, Mike Bassett. 
How you going, guys? <laughs> Wonderful, Mike. <laughs> we're, we're a bit perplexed would be the right answer after hearing that uh, that's, that's the show for you, mate. I'm very disappointed that Sean said it was it was scripted. I, uh, <laughs> I've got to dispute that. That is so wrong. It is just natural love in its raw Yeah, what state. is it you love so much about it? Like, of course, obviously the bonding opportunity with me, but what else is it that makes you want to turn yeah. on every day? Well, that's, that's probably the number one, actually, is the oh. bonding opportunity mm. with you and your sister because it was like a little, little family. We used to have a... Uh, debrief afterwards and before and, and you're quite right it is ruined now that you've moved back to Perth because I don't get that foresight into it yes yes, yes. yes. <laughs> can't make any bets yeah it's just when you see them all paired up on paper in the beginning you think oh yeah that, that's going to work that, that, that's nobody says good. Mike nobody says yeah. that what do you mean Mike <laughs> believes the experts are experts everybody yeah, says yeah, everybody says the opposite it. that's not going to work yeah, are yeah. you kidding Mark. They're experts. That's why they're there. <laughs> right. Okay, Mike. So, talk to me. I, I want to know how, how much this affects you. Jack, talk to me about Jack. Oh, Jack. Yeah. Well, he, you've always got to have the villain with these shows. So he's obviously he drew the villain score uh, card. Yes. And yeah, yeah no. Nah, Tori, I think she was just in it for. The fame in the end because you couldn't Straight out. possibly go yeah. with Jack for all of that you stuff couldn't. that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. you don't blame them. You just realise that they've pulled that card and that's what they're... Exactly. That's the card you dealt. It's like life, isn't it? You get dealt a card and you've got to run with that Mike, card. Mike, you like to explain yourself. You're an intelligent viewer of maths, aren't you? Oh, I'd like to think I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, did, did Caitlin ever bring home a Jack during her dating <gasps> no. years? No. no. My no, greatest disappointment no. is that I haven't been on maths. Isn't that right, Dad? That's right, yes, yes. But there's, there's love triangles on, so we're going to put you down for that one. <laughs> Mike, I, I, could, I, could, I could go. Love triangle. Love triangle. I go with that. You cannot be watching Love Triangle, Mike. Love Triangle is the thinking person's math. <laughs> and you would be fine with your daughters going on maths or Love Triangle? You'd be like, yeah. Uh, probably more farmer wants to watch. <laughs> oh, my God. Is there a show that you are not watching? Hi, Kylie. Hello. Hi, Kylie. Hi, Kylie. All right, so, Kylie, tell us about what happens. Well, I actually just got reminded of something you said about the shopping centre overseas as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, basically, it's two stories. There's, um, my parents have gone on um, our honeymoons. And when I'm saying our honeymoons, my brothers and mine. <gasps> the what? On your honeymoons? No. Okay. Yeah. Were they paying? Yeah. The, do you think you have to bring them along? Like adjoining rooms? No, 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 no. So, they were in like... A, so, we had our honeymoon in Bali. Yes. They were in a different part of Bali. But we saw them every single day. Like, my... <laughs> My husband went missing with my dad one night. What? Um, yeah, like they'd come out. But the original sort of thing I was calling about is my parents just separated. Yeah. Mm. And my brothers and I go over and we're in our 30s to my mum's house and we'll have a few drinks and it gets quite messy and then we start getting all the mattresses out because we don't want to miss the party and in the end it's like five mattresses all on the floor in the lounge room. We all sleep in together. Oh, in like we did as kids. Room. Are you joking? So what's everyone's ages? Um, I'm the oldest. I'm 37 this year. My brother's 35 and my youngest brother is 33. Oh, so, so cute. Do you build a That's fort? And we've, <laughs> um, we have in the past. Actually, we, we have in the past. In the past. Yeah. <gasps> Sweetheart. And my mum was the instigator. Oh, of course she so was. Good. She wants a baby yeah, she, knows back. Where, she knows where the blankets yes, are. Yes. This is in yes. To me, like, think about it, right? This, to me, is so cute and sweet and mm. wholesome. But yet, if you were to walk in on this, it seemed culty. Weird. And weird, yeah. yeah. Culty weird. Well, we've yeah. all got kids. We've all got kids as well. But you have sleepovers at your mum's house. Yeah, on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and weird. <laughs> and, they, and, and, yeah. and if anyone in that family gets married... The parents are going on the honeymoon. <laughs> Come on, that is brilliant. Thanks, Kylie. Tyler's in Canningvale. Hey, Ty. How you going? Yeah, good, good Tyler. All right, we're talking about um, things that you do with your parents that other people probably won't do. What is it? Um, well, me and my dad, uh, oh, I don't know, probably the last two or three years, um, just 
every time we see something we think is interesting, I don't know whether it be sort of like a big rock or a cool looking power pole or something. Find <laughs> <laughs> me the cool looking power pole. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the two examples yeah, are a big, a big rock or a cool looking power pole. Yeah. yeah, keep going. Sorry. Um, and yeah, my dad travels around Australia a lot for his work, so there's a fair few things he sees. Um, and any time we see it, we just take a, a classic dad selfie, is what we call it. Just yes. Pick in the, you get your head in the side of the pick, um, <laughs> sideways camera, just nice big grin, sideways. and with the with the interesting object in the background. And yeah, we've just done that for the past two or three years. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, every time I tell my mates about it, they think it's weird and just interesting. But I it's think pretty that funny, is so isn't it? great. Yeah, it's great. It's funny. Because my favourite thing about yeah. parent selfies are they always are um, landscape. Yeah. <laughs> They're never oh, portrait. Yeah. has to be landscape. <laughs> has to be landscape. I love how interesting things, like the rock and a power pole, like what else have we got on the list that tops interesting things? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what else have you had? Do you know the blue trees you see when you're driving down the country yeah, roads yes. and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always get a, a pick with a blue tree. Um, <laughs> It, it really could be anything. Um, yep. it's, we, we do a lot of country driving, so just anything. We see a lot of old cars and stuff like that. Um, there's a good one if you're going up north from Perth. There's like an old beetle that's on the side of the road. Every time he drives past that, I get that one. Um, <laughs> so he'll take a fresh photo every time. Yeah, pretty much. A- Any time he goes past something, even if he's done it before, there'll be another one coming. Don't worry. Oh, oh I'm I'm sorry. That is hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. Okay, let's finish off with Sam from Byford. Hi, Sam. Hello. Hey. Hey, All Sam. right, so Sam, what do you do with your parents? That's a bit unusual. So I grew up um, watching supercar racing with my dad um, back many, many years ago. Fast forward to 2024, and my dad now has Alzheimer's, and he lives about 400 k's away. Oh. So now, every year, Bathurst comes on the um, on the telly, and yeah. we watch it on KO, and we're watching it at different speeds on KO for starters, which always means <laughs> there's massive spoilers yes. during the race. Yes. <laughs> but my dad's Alzheimer's kicks in hard about halfway through the race, and now he thinks that Alan Moffat and Peter Brock are on the racetrack, oh. and he's one tweeting to me this race that isn't actually happening. Oh. <laughs> But is the race that is the race he's seeing? Is it way better than the race you're watching? Yeah, a hundred percent. It's way more entertaining. Well, it's got all the legends in it. It's all the legends. Yeah, Dickie Johnson, number (laughs) seventeen. And it's great that I'm watching it delayed because he can enjoy his race, and then I will just pause KO and I will watch my race later. (laughs) Oh, okay, that works. Can I just say that was really beautiful to share a um a lovely story about your dad who's suffering from Alzheimer's (laughs) because we you know we we hear we hear the the sadness from it so much and to hear something really lovely. From that, that's beautiful. Thank you, sweetheart. Nathan, Nat, and Sean in podcast form. Well, the big man Sean Darcy is in the house, and good news for Dockers fans because he is Woo! back yes. in the team. Yes, big time. Swag. Now this is when the football starts. Well said, Nate. <laughs> that's what he said to you. That's yeah, right. No, he yeah, told he me. He said, "Say this." How are you, mate? Good guys. Good guys. How are we going? Good. Really good. So you've had enough of rehab, and you know, getting hammered on the weekends. Yeah, it's been. Pretty tough uh, start to the season. Uh, five weeks running around the side of an oval while all the boys are playing. It's pretty lonely. Um, but, yeah, got through it. I'm um, feeling really good and really excited for tomorrow. How much better does your knee feel? Yeah, knee feels really good. Um, I didn't realise there was like seven bits of cartilage floating around in that and they just like pick it out like a game of a operation. Lot. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't expect to get that much out, um, the surgeon. So when he um, showed me the... Little tub of full of cartilage. There was quite a bit there. So. How big is like nice. so the bit a bit of cartilage that floats around and hurts you? How big is that? Like size wise, so, a, gra- a grain of a grain of rice? Yeah, no, nah, bigger than that. Uh, um, like so what? yeah, like a ten, um, five cent piece, ten cent piece. No, nah, smaller than that in between. So <laughs> one cent <laughs> piece. Yeah. <laughs> Keep working, you'll find something. <laughs> now, and what do you think this is going to be like for Fremantle to have the, the big fella out there? Yeah, it's going to make a huge difference. I'm so excited for Sean to get back out there. Um, yeah, I think after the last two losses, obviously really close, um, I think Sean's just going to bring that competitiveness back into the midfield and obviously really help um, having a big ruck back, um, yeah. but also, which would be awesome. It's not just the skills that he brings to the table, it's the Hemsworthness of it all. Um, oh. As you know, I've said this for years. Is Nathan's opinion, yes. <laughs> I do. He's got the Hemsworths about him and that's what football's been, been lacking. Missing. It's been missing. what it's been lacking. All right, I'll take that, yeah. And Sean, Sweet. you did win um, one of the Glenn Dinning Allen medals a few years ago, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I've got one. So there you go. He performs in Derby, so super pumped to see him out there tomorrow. 
Do you hang that medal somewhere? Where do you put your yeah, achievements? Yeah. yeah, no idea. Um, <laughs> Has your mum got it all? No, it's... I don't know. Um, I've moved house recently and it didn't... Um, it wasn't didn't travel the, with you. Yeah, I don't think it travelled with me. <laughs> oh, so. what? Well, this is I you're, you're, talking you're undergoing re- no. renovations, aren't yeah, you? So. You kind of you lost have it. To. I wouldn't have lost it. It just would be in the other house somewhere. This is the thing I don't get about you sports people <laughs> is that you get achievements and win medals and stuff like that. And, and uh, from what I can tell you, none of you hang them on your wall. Why is that? I wasn't allowed at my new house. <laughs> Megan doesn't like to see you achieve. <laughs> she doesn't like to see it in person. She doesn't like to see proof of it on a wall. <laughs> so do you hang up any of your... Because you know how your mum and dad put all your trophies out. Do you do that at your place? I just give them to my mum and dad, for sure. Yeah, that's and probably what I should, I should do that. Give them to mum and dad. Because then I know that it's safe with them. It's like I still have my address on most of the important mail that I get. In Northern, so mum and dad receive it and My not me. My mum and dad still get mail yeah. as well. Oh, that, yeah. I think that works. That's safest. Com- safest option. So if I get a speeding fine, please pay it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sean, before we get so, uh, back into some of the football, there's been a bit of modelling taking place by one Sean Darcy. <laughs> On the screen behind us right now, you can see us, uh, Sean, in the Street X apparel. So if you've ever doubted my Hemsworthness of it all, um, it's, 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 it's on the screen right now. We'll put these oh, up on our socials, Nathan like and Sean new, on Instagram. I don't like this new stuff. Well, what I love it about though is that like the way you were modelling not only a jacket before but a fishing rod was yeah do you like that well I've never seen I haven't seen a it's lot got no of, line on honest, it either. I, I lie I have seen a lot of rod <laughs> modelling no <laughs> and with... you are a really good rod model <laughs> yeah and what's the latest one Nathan that you're looking at right now right now we're looking at um Sean Darcy because let me tell you right Harley Harley Reid who Sean Darcy's everywhere <laughs> he's in the paper page three get yourself a favour go and get yourself a copy Nathan skips past the football as quickly as possible <laughs> to get to the fashion. We need to. Sean Darcy is here showing people what fashion is. Um, other people put clothes on, he wears them, and that's the difference. Um, who are you here with, Darcy? Um, yeah, there's a horse. There's a horse. Yeah. Uh, James Jones and Britt Taylor, is it? Yeah. And um, you're there for? Uh, this weekend, the Quokka Cup. Yeah. And um, um, Darcy enraged our producer, Amy. She yeah, Amy wasn't Darce. too happy. He's wearing a beautiful grey suit, um, a striped shirt. A, 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 How good's a, a tie? I tied that by myself. You tied that yourself? Yeah. I can't tie it. It's a great tie. You know, yeah. If I buy a tie from Maya or something, I get the ladies there to do it around me and then I take it off oh, over my yeah. head and then that's the tie forever. <laughs> it's true. But Amy, what was your main problem? Go over to the microphone that you had with this suit. And we'll put this up on our socials as well. Love the suit. Handsome fella. Yeah. Handsome fella. Yes. Chris Hemsworth. Oh, Byron him. Bay, can you smell it? <laughs> However, <laughs> I'm annoyed yes. with the fact that you're leaning over yeah. onto the horse yeah, yeah, yeah. and the photographer has not witnessed yeah. the fact that your jacket is now pulling open. Yes. Button because... done up still. Yes. Mm. So it looks like a stretched suit. Yeah, I agree. He, he, he should have pulled that. If you are yes. to lean or to make the jacket gape, you are to undo the button. Correct. But we're we saying this word? isn't Sean's fault, though. We don't think no. it is. No, we think the photographer probably should have told him to either undo that button yep. or don't lean on the horse. Or don't lean on As the horse. As I've experienced from Sean modelling, Sean does what the photographer wants, and that's why everyone's so keen to work with him. <laughs> um, as you can see from the street <laughs> X modelling <laughs> shots, they've said put that rod behind your, ne- your head, and he, he he's got his rod and he's got it behind his head. Everyone's going to be able to check these out on our socials and see what we're talking about very shortly because they are winners. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Damien Martin. Yeah, Marto, just a second ago, actually, we were talking off air before we came on and you were mentioning uh, when you're a single bachelor in uh, Bicton. Cooking wasn't a big thing for you. No, no. When I first moved to Perth, and still to this day, who am I kidding? I'm useless at trying to provide dinner for myself or others. And so living by myself down in Bicton, I ordered some Domino's and the delivery (laughs) guy rocked up to the door, knocked, I opened it. And to this day, I'll never forget the look of disappointment when I opened the door and goes, ah... I thought you were Damien Martin, the cricketer. And so I was like, I had to apologise. Hey, sorry, mate. I'll just, I'll just grab the meat lovers and head in if that's okay. But, uh, no, for you. I had to put up with it. Yeah, when you first.
first came over, Damien Martin was a big name Australian cricketer, WA uh, champion here. So, yeah, everyone would have just thought it was him straight. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine. Mate, yeah. I had a rough start when it came to being the same namesake as a cricketer, but it's nothing in comparison to my dad, whose name's Ray Martin, oh. and then my oh. uncle, whose name's Steve Martin. So we're oh. literally the B-grade <laughs> version of everyone named the same. So that's, that's our amazing. upbringing. You yeah. must get so many upgrades in hotels yeah. and things like that. They were getting cut off. Oh, Ray Martin's yeah. cut off. There would be no other Caitlin Bassett, is there? Uh, no, well, no. There was. I got pulled over once for talking on my phone, naughty, naughty, and um, they said to me, oh, hold on, there's a warrant out on oh. your name. Oh, yes. And I had to give them my driver's licence, and there was another Caitlin Bassett who was born the same year, a day after me, and what who she... had a warrant out. I don't really? know what she looked like, but I was, like, very nervous. Because there was, wow. there, there, I found another Sean McManus, yeah, and did. she is oh. a porn star. Oh. <laughs> I know. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> that is exciting. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. It's, it's I was sure. hoping yeah. not yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and the only other Nathan Morris that I know is he's one of the mem- members of Boys, Boys to Men. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. So yeah. who was who were we talking to at that time? Was it Hamish or Andy? Andy, Andy mm. had Googled us beforehand just to get a bit of information on there, and he was um he was confused as to why I would have a multi-million dollar recording contract. <laughs> you were here in Perth at a show. He goes, "I looked at your net worth. God, you're worth a bit." Oh no, mate, that's that's another guy. That's hey, at the end of the road. Hey, Marta, before we let you go, uh, you also do. Uh, an afternoon radio show. I do. I'm over there on SCN, so it's all talk back. It's 70% football, a sport I know nothing about. Do you want to borrow a Dua Lipa song? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listening to music on radio, I was like, oh, this is a nice change up because we're two hours, an hour 40 of interviews, 20 minutes of ads. But luckily, I'm with uh, Paul Hazelby, who's been oh, brilliant. Hayes. He carries the show, a delight to work with. But he is bragging at the moment because I believe the two of you are doing swimming each morning, Sean. And he's just saying, I've got the flippers on. And he reckons he's beating you out there in the in the open water. He absolutely got me yesterday. I couldn't catch him Hayes at all. did. He was wearing flippers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened in the port the pub because you guys got towed up yeah, by we did. the Eagles. We did. Oh. Yes, uh, three years running in a row, we, we'd been victorious. Um, I, I'm not going to say just because I wasn't swimming in the team. <laughs> yeah, you did but, you step know, away this dots. year. <laughs> uh, Hay stepped in and the Eagles were able to get the job done. Will Schofield, though, I will say, because I swam against him once and he burnt me off. So he added to their team uh, to give them a bit of the uh, upper hand. Well, when Hay said he was going to partake, partake in this in a team of four, I was like, mate, you're an anchor by player, anchor by swimming. Like, what are you thinking? But he's falling in love with it. And look, Looking good, so I appreciate it because he's coming in with a pep in his step every day. There you go. You got an anchor. We've got a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean. Uh, everyone, if you've got some uh, room in your heart and room in your life for uh, a greyhound, please consider it. Go to greyhoundspets.com.au. Marto, thanks so much for bringing in. Turtle. Good to see you. Thanks mate. a lot. Thanks, everyone. It's the Nathan, Matt, and Sean podcast. Lego Masters Australia versus the World returns on Channel 9 and 9 now. And oh, yes. We've got the man in charge of the geeks. <laughs> Hamish, Blake, how are you? Hello, Hamish. Hello, hello, guys. Um, man in, I like that you pause there with man in charge because I was like, I wonder what he's going to say here because well, I'm not really in charge of anything. Well, to be honest, like, kind of the clock and that's it. Yeah, well, to be honest, though, I was wondering um, when this show was coming on, I thought, what are the other Lego fan builders like around the world? And uh, they're all the same. Yeah, <laughs> they're all nerds. They're, they're all, all nerds really in the, nice. in the Lego world. I don't think any of them have ever hurt a fly. They're all a bit different though, Haim, all the different nationalities. They are. I mean, well, that's the beautiful thing about Lego, you know, it doesn't, creativity takes infinite shapes and sizes and um, and forms. And that's the fun, that is the fun part about watching, I mean, I think Brickman might even say it a bit later in the series, so I think I might be stealing one of his emotional lines here, but I think he puts it very well where he's like, there's no language with Lego. It brings everyone together. There's no words in the instructions. You know, we have, all, we all to, get it. There'd have to be a bad person out there building Lego, though. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Like, a real, them, like yeah. a real evil person, like a serial yeah, killer. Yeah, thing, actually. You might just jot that down for next season. Just <laughs> the, villains. But the, villains versus nerds. But, hey, <laughs> this is exactly why Lego Masters is completely different to maths, isn't it? Because you don't yeah, have exactly. any... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, um, I, I read that uh, one of your favourite teams is um, the German team. We've only seen sure. uh, a little bit of them so far. Have you heard the German guy speak? Well, I was just going to say, I, I've, uh, I had a German couple living with me for three weeks just last month. So I it oh, was great. entertaining the whole way through. And the one thing 
um, that surprised me is one thing that stood out for them about Australia was the fact that people say hello to you and actually smile at you, like walking down the street, Nathan. You're yeah, right. They, they were blown away by people being friendly. God, they, they'd drive off Very. the road if they got the complimentary finger wave for letting you <laughs> through on the traffic. Yeah. Mate, I mean, that's a, that's a very astute... I reckon that actually makes a lot of sense because so Felix and Annalena, they are our German yes. you know, like And I don't think in the German version, the host stops by the tables quite as much to annoy everyone. <laughs> I know. No doubt. <laughs> And I just got a, I just get a sense throughout the season that they're like, "What are you doing here, man? Like, we're busy." Can yeah, I be man. honest though? I've picked up on that, Haim, and it was the, it was yeah. the, it was the one where they were building the hot dog go kart because I just don't feel like <laughs> Felix trusts you because yeah. Haim started talking about the bunning sausage yeah, sizzle, yeah, yeah, and and I'm really surprised. I'm honestly blown away that people that come to this country they've never put a sausage in bread. That to me just blows me away because it's one of the most simple things to do. Everyone's got sausages everyone's got bread. Yeah, but they're all used to jazzing it up with yeah. all the other condiments and whatnot. Yeah. So Hamish has done, because he what doesn't he, he doesn't eat meat, so Hamish mm. has done like a veggie one for him and like gone to hand it to him and then like he like the, the guy didn't want to put it in his mouth and it's like, you're on TV, Hamish isn't poisoning you. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> he was this isn't like, a snuff no, for him. <laughs> not interested. And because he, they're really here to win. I love Felix and Annalena deeply. So I yep. just kind of but it's, it's sort of like, it's, I feel a little bit how I feel when I just keep kind of like booting my dad, who's yeah. just like busy and trying to do something else. Because I'm like, he's, like they, they're here to like build amazing Lego and I can't help but just try and get a little rise out of them because I just love the fact that they just keep turning around going, we're busy. Please go away. <laughs> <laughs> they had Sophie Monk on the go kart challenge, and she turns to the camera and goes, "We don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know who they are. <laughs> She's very pretty, but I don't know who she is." <laughs> are they getting the humour or the, all the different? I, I, I know they're enjoying their time on Lego Masters, as everybody does. But are they getting some of the stuff you're coming up with, Haim? I think they are. I don't. I think they are, absolutely. I think they. I mean, as the season progresses, to I. You will see we 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 coalesce and I think everyone finds each other's level too. But I think that has been the great fun about this season too. We're like, it's 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 you know it's not lost on us that it's very cool that you know this show's gone to like thirty countries oh, around the world. Yeah. So you get you get to have this pool of people like this family that you've never met that can come and immediately know exactly what you're talking about with challenges and brick pits and things like that. So it's really fun to be able to do that. So you and Brickman um, had this idea, actually, you were like spitballing it over time um, to come up with uh, Australia versus the world. Well, you, we, you've got to do it. Yeah, you have to wait till you've done enough, I suppose, that it's gone, you know, internationally before you've got enough of a pool to pick. <laughs> but, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. There's a, there's, I mean, if anyone wants to laugh, Google the Japanese version of Lego Masters. I mean, we... We're on the show and we have no idea what's going on. Like, what's oh, really? the Japanese version? Like, what is this? <laughs> Japanese but, game shows are whack, aren't they? So when I got out of Big Brother first, I was asked to host for um, Fox Teller show called Takeshi's Castle. Oh yeah, you should have. Yeah, and um, no, no, I did, and, but it was uh, it was me hosting at Hamish like in real time, but this it was filmed like twenty years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> real hot, real hot. I think I think I got paid two hundred dollars an episode. <laughs> Big TV money. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Home? Oh, yeah, no, you've been, that, that little nest egg will be tucked away somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. What an absolute treat to have Jeremy McGovern back in the house uh, as we look forward to the Derby on Saturday night. And as soon as he came in, everyone wanted to know about his uh, his teeth. Because yeah. as Nathan alluded to last week, they were, they were knocked out. I spoke to Pav about you and I said, I do, I do not get how a sports person, and this is why you are worth every cent of that million dollars you say you don't earn. <laughs> Because I should be getting that. Yeah. But, but it's the on the AFL to, website, to, to, Jeremy. <laughs> to spit your teeth out, hand them to someone, and then keep playing, Gov. That is, um, you are you've gone up so high in my eyes, and you are up high already. <laughs> oh, really? I'm glad I went up yeah. in your eyes, yeah. Nathan. That's yeah. great. North Calgary um, Primary School. I'll do it all over you. again if I if I get your approval. Thank you. But, uh, so yeah. tell me what happened. Oh, I cracked my teeth. Which ones? So the uh, one at the back. Like got, got, like a molar at the back. Like if a, it's a molar, like so a, like, is the word, yeah, I've cracked my molar. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, and, then you, yeah no. and then you felt your molar floating around your uh, Yeah, yeah, so I just pulled it out. and You like, pulled it out? Yeah. It was like dangling. <laughs> yeah, it, was so just, you, it so didn't you, feel that. No, yeah, yeah. So it like cracked in half and then, sure. yeah. And anyway, then I just, so it was half in, a tooth. It out, and then you handed it, half it to uh, one of the docks. And then they ran. And, and he just threw it on the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
it's your front pegs. They save them, right? And they can chuck them in or, milk or something. Yeah. Or something. Milk, I didn't milk. know. I didn't yeah. know. I was like, can you save this thing? It's cracked. And I looked at it. I was like, oh, nah, he'd take it. Yeah. And then well, he just looked go- at it and just threw it straight down. And that was it. I was like, beautiful. And your mouth guard wouldn't even stop that from happening. Then, nah. if it was one of your back so teeth. So I normally have it in, but I had it in my. I didn't get time to put it in oh. between whenever I was doing so that's how it cracked where, yeah. where, the, where, where do you get your mouth guard when it's not you don't there's a little like mouth guard pockets. pocket on your oh, shorts. shorts that's great or socks or oh, shorts pocket. depending socks. Oh. so yeah I had it in my shorts I was always used to do it in your socks and you think about that and, and you just went oh so right. why do we do that I don't know y- your socks are getting sweat and leg sweat and yeah, yeah well there's a pocket on your I shorts I I prefer my socks and my shorts like a though. little like a lot in your jeans oh, yeah. pocket <laughs> yeah or no it's just like on the top top section of your shorts is a little is a little Pocket. There you go. Did like, you ever have here. a mouth guard pocket in your shorts no, when you're no, playing? No, See how the game's changed, Sean. <laughs> yeah. M, you're playing the game, your tooth gets broken. Do you spit it out, hand it to someone and keep playing? The answer is yes, isn't it? It has to be, <laughs> does it? Or not? I mean, the brave answer is yes. The real answer is I'd probably cry. <laughs> yeah. I'm worried that the cameras are on and someone's going to see me with a gap in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise they got it because, I, yeah, I don't know, it was a bit weird and then... Everyone was sending me videos of it, and I thought, oh, that doesn't look yeah. too nice. No, no. I had to explain to my son, Hudson, why I didn't have my mouth guard in. So. Oh, right. Oh, yes, yeah. Dad. So that was Always a big conversation. Good hey, um, Gov, at the start of the week, you celebrated your birthday. Yes, I yeah, did. And I felt birthday, like there was a little bit of possible overshadowing because there was another person in your team that celebrated a birthday right around you as well. Ooh. Harley Reid. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. Uh, who's that? I don't know. Yeah, Harley, yeah. Oh, yeah, guy yeah. that... They should Apparently. write about him. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I'm more than happy to sit back. It's You don't really want to celebrate your birthday too much when you're getting over 30 in the AFL industry. How, so how old is he? He'd be 19. 19. 19. 19. That's disgusting, yeah, it is. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, how dare he turn like, uh, If you're 19 and you're going to have a birthday, make sure it's not around someone that's over 30. Yeah. Like, keep it to I yourself. Agree. <laughs> I'll just yourself. let him know next year to just... Dampen it down. Just quite Just, down, I want mate. all the attention on myself. Did they put a happy birthday card on the back of the West Australian for him? That would seem to have been a missed opportunity. Yeah. Oh, I don't I don't think I remember it because it, he was on the back page because that's every day, but I didn't see a birthday card. You can you can flick through. In the mm, meantime, sorry. I wanted to see, how do you see West Coast performance on the weekend heading into this derby? You're going to have to be an, analysing this uh, mm. on Saturday night on Channel 7. Well, Sean, you've already told me you're going to have 10 beers before you rock up on Channel 7, so... Yes, I have to be Only ten. Um, on my game. Um, no, I think, like, I'm obviously not around the club, but I'd say your tails are up. I think it's really positive that you had a win on the weekend, and I think you've probably got momentum leading into tomorrow night's game, and now that especially the young players know what it feels like to have a win, I definitely think that you're going to come out firing. I do too. Can yeah, I, can, that's the plan, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I was going to say, um, where do you think that West Coast can have an edge over Fremantle M, taking your Dockers mm. hat off for the governor? Oh, I don't know. I think our Frio backs have been pretty stingy, so good luck to your forwards. Um, <laughs> but I think I think the mids is going to be a really good battle. Yeah. Yeah, I think someone's going to have to take Yo. Don't know who it's going to be, but yeah. I think, yeah, mids are going to be yeah, one that's, for one for that's sure. Where it's, yeah, the midfield's obviously where it starts for yeah. sure. So uh, Frio have got a great midfield. Uh, obviously bringing Sean Darcy back now, so they've yep. got two A-grade rucks. So that'll be a challenge for us for sure, but... Um, It'll start there and then we'll see how we go there and if it's breaking even there or we're on top, hopefully, which would be great. But um, then it's obviously up up to either end. So we'll see how we go. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Back on Monday, filling in for her is Emma O'Driscoll from the Fremantle Dockers. But we know that a lot of people out there, before a big competition, they have psychic octopuses or random things to be able to choose a winner from that. But Certainly do. The Derby requires something more, Sean. It requires the F word. Well, we're going to be playing the F word today. So Marlene Morris has stepped in as an Eagles supporter. She's going to be teamed up with the great man, Jerry McGovern, that oh, Dan uh, the really? other day couldn't remember who that is. Nathan, you'll be the ju- uh, adjudicator? Yeah, I'll be the adjudicator, um, along with um, Amy, of course. And what, Emma no? O'Driscoll from the Dockers and myself will represent Frio. Yep. So here's the deal. There is going to be, and the audience will hear this, there is going to be a winning word and there is going to be an F word. The winning word is the thing that you want your partner to guess. 
If they are to guess the F word, then you're out. The clues that you can give for the winning word is only one word clues. They cannot rhyme with the word. They cannot, um, yeah, just don't cheat. <laughs> okay, we've got to go through the thing. Jeremy well, knows this uh, game a lot so more than we do. If you say the losing word, you're out. You're out. Do so we get a point? Thing? What's yeah, that? The yeah. other team yeah. gets a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Is that just for like one round, though? And then we'll do more. Oh, like we're doing more rounds. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Don't you worry about that. Okay. Uh, you guys have had a discussion within your own teams. Um, Sean, yep. there is someone that's going to be serving the clue, and there's someone that's going to be receiving the clue in your team. Who would that be? Uh, I'm going to be serving the clue. Uh, either way, I wasn't going to be good at any of it. <laughs> yep. So I yep. decided to go that way, Em. All right. Yeah, put the blame on Em, mate. Nice. Oh, Gov well, it's not and be Gov. Marlene. Yeah, I'm going to deliver the clue. Yeah. He doesn't Gov said, no, you know, Gov said the most intelligent person delivers the clue. No, <laughs> no I did not. I just thought that was easy and I, and I can blame Marlene for the loss. <laughs> and you're, and you're going to be about three foot shorter. Yeah. All the time I finish. All right, guys, let's, let's so what we happen. need you all to do right now is we need you to remove your headphones and we need you... Oh, I know, Seth, right? Oh, sorry. sorry. Emma and Marlene. And Marlene. Yes, yeah, Emma and Marlene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Block your ears. Block right. your ears. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. The winning word is mattress and the F word is bed. Oh, that's a good one. All right, come back. This is easy. Oh, I'm just going to have to sleeping. Night. No. Uh, Listen to this. Posturepedic. Bed. No. No! Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the F word. F word was bed. Oh, the F word was bed. It was mattress, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It's the answer was mattress. Yeah. I go, oh, my God. No one's winning, hard. but everyone's Four. failing. Went this is hard. hilarious. Okay, here we go, guys. This is this is the tiebreaker. The winning word is mountain, and the F word is hill. Oh. oh. Please approach the bench. Oh, no. Derby this decider. is the Derby decider, everybody. This is going to decide who wins out of the Eagles and the Dockers over the weekend. Um, serving first from the Fremantle Dockers side is Sean McManus to Emma O'Driscoll. Take it away. Kilimanjaro. Because <laughs> if I chose a different one, Emma goes, cheese. <laughs> I have no idea. You can pass if you like to. Is that mean I don't get a point though? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just goes over there. I've actually That's prefer pass. Okay. Pass. You can pass. Okay. No, you can pass. You can say. You can pass. Pass. I'm passing. I can pass. They can pass. Because it's going to bounce pass. back anyway. So let's she go. Can pass. But then why don't we just keep passing? Okay. All right. Okay. Wait. Okay. No. Gov is not happy. That's fine. We'll continue. We'll continue. Everest. Mountain. Because I thought you were going to go with Everest. I know. You just had to name another mountain. Everest, but what? Kilimanjaro's a mountain. I knew that as well, but not. That's not. Was that common? Everest is very common. Yeah, yeah, I know. But is that? Was that? That was. Yeah, that was. Sean, you always go too niche with your mountains, and that's why. And that's why the free member loggers have lost. The West Coast Eagles, Marlene Morris, Jeremy McGovern, team together to bring home the Derby win. This was a decider. Let's see if this is how the results are really. I was really waiting for oh. you to say climb. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.